In this video, we do uh, two mean dependent samples. Another name for that is match pairs, confidence interval, and hypothesis test. So we have our confidence interval design, the usual uh, design here, and we have our our error term. In hypothesis test, we have our t value design and our degrees of freedom. Okay, uh, the degrees of freedom for this one it got chopped off. The the df for this one is also n minus one. Okay, so let's do our example. Confidence interval for the mean difference of match pairs data. So here's how match pairs work. This is a perfect example for it. A study was conducted to measure the effectiveness of hypnotism in reducing pain. The measurements are in are centimeters on a pain scale before and after hypnosis. Assuming that the paired data is a simple random sample and the uh, differences have a distribution that is approximately normal, that's the normal requirement for using this method we're gonna do. Construct a 95% confidence interval for the mean of the before minus after differences. Does hypnotism appear to be effective in reducing pain? So here's your before and your after. You're looking at that, and for the hypnotism to work to reduce pain, you would like the before hypnotism to be higher pain than after. In other words, after hypnotism, you want a lower number of pain than before. So this is data coming from one person. They measured the person's pain before the hypnotism, then they hypnotized the person and found out that the pain did indeed go down to 6.7. So that looks promising. But then they tested somebody else and uh, that pain level actually went up after hypnotism. So that's looking bad. So the idea of paired, matched pairs or paired comparisons, sometimes they say, is that you're controlling for the person because each person has different pain levels, you know, and different reactions to different things to raise that pain or lower that pain. So you want to take the person out of the equation. So you want to do him before and after. Then go to the next person and do before then after. See, so controlling the person. You can't just take the mean of all these before data and subtract off the mean of all these because you're contaminating it because some of the people have lower pain in the beginning anyway or higher pain. So this is the way you want to do it. Any kind of before after, like the studying help for a test, you know, before studying, take the test, then study for it, take a test, you know, things like that are good to do with matched pairs. So if, uh, if you're uh, after showing if a hypnotism reduces pain, then you want the pain level after to be less than the pain level before. So if we subtract before minus after, before minus after, we're looking for mostly positive results if we want any chance of showing hypnotism works. Okay, so we're gonna make a table. Before minus after, we took the uh, numbers out of the other table subtracted before minus after for each one and got all these data. Okay, now we use the TI to get the average of those differences and the standard deviation for those differences. Um, sometimes they put a little D down here to remind you that you're doing the standard deviation of the differences, not the individual standard deviations for the uh, before numbers and the after numbers. Okay, so then uh, you put the D values into L1, you go stat, and then edit to get to L1. Then you do stat, again, calculate number one, and you get the information that you need. And for this design, the degrees of freedom is N minus one, which is seven. It's just at this point, it becomes very much like a one mean test. 
because you have one column of data and you're trying to find something out about the mean of that one column of data. So it's just like a one mean test. Okay, then you set up your picture to make sure you know what's going on. Uh, it's a 95% confidence interval, so there's 0.025 in each tail. So you have to find your T value on that tail. So you do your inverse T that you're getting from second vars inverse T. Put in the area below your T. Here's your T. So below is all this area below over there, which is 1 minus 0.025. Degrees of freedom is 7. Um, hit paste or, or put it, this in on the home screen. Same thing. And you get this. 2.3646. That's your T critical. And then the designs says to put the T critical, I should put the T critical there. T critical times the standard deviation of the differences over the square root of N. So here's your numbers. And you get 1.938. So your 95% confidence interval for the uh, differences, for the mean difference, is your normal design there. Put the numbers in. Uh, the average difference was 0.925 and you get this interval right here. So your mean difference lies somewhere between those two numbers. So the mean difference between pain level before hypnosis and after is between negative 1.013 and 2.863 zeros in that interval. It's in between here. And uh, zero difference is no difference. So that's bad news for people hoping hypnotism lowers pain level because it looks like zero is right, right in that interval. But we're going to do a hypothesis test to be sure about that. Okay, so same, everything's the same, the same data. I just asked a different question. Does hypnotism appear to be effective in reducing pain? Tested the alpha 0.05 significance level. I put that in there. Okay, so if we stick with the before minus after differences, then for hypnotism to work in lowering pain, in other words, to be effective, effective, we need the average difference to be positive. We need the before to be greater than the after. In other words, we wanted the after to drop and be lower than the before, so you get positive differences. And we need it to be significantly so. So our hypothesis design is, the null hypothesis is that the mean difference of the matched pairs would be zero, and the alternate is that it'd be greater than zero because we're doing before minus after, and we want the before to be greater than the after if the hypnotism is to lower the pain level. So our data is the same as it was uh, before. And we draw our picture. We're testing in the right tail, alpha 0.05. And we got a T critical down there, but we're going to do the p-value comparison method. So we're not really going to have to find that T critical. But we do have our T design. It's the D bar, average of the differences, minus the hypothesized mean difference, which is zero. The hypothesis says that the mean difference is going to be zero. So you put that stuff in, n is eight, here's your standard deviation of the differences. Again, I should probably put the little d there. Then there's how it might look in the ti. I'm trying to get rid of that. Okay, so I have a stubborn little clock coming in here. Well, I don't want to do that. I'm going to click this away. Come on. Really? <laughs> okay. Now, um, I'm going after... Uh, I get my T value comes out to be 1.1283, and that feels like a fail to reject because you know that's a pretty low T value as these things go from your experience in the course. But let's just plug on and chug on and see what happens. Uh, 
we got our alpha 0.05 region. We don't know where this our T value lies yet. So let's just find out. The P value is the second VARS T CDF. You put in your number. I'm going to 10 because there's hardly any area out there at 10. Seven degrees of freedom. Eight minus one, seven degrees of freedom. Comes out to be P value of 0.1482. And uh, that puts 0.1482 is bigger than the alpha area of 0.05, way bigger. So that puts our T value of 1.183 indeed over to not beyond the T critical. So it is a fail to reject HO because the P value is greater than the alpha level. In other words, your T value is not beyond the T critical. So the way you word it is that way mathematically and then in words you put there is not sufficient evidence, not sufficient evidence to support the claim that hypnotism lowers pain level. Uh, at the alpha 0.05 level, P value is 0.1482. So uh, the way you might think about that is the news headline could be something like Study shows hypnotism is a scam when you're trying to lower your pain. You know, that's the kind of thing that news jumps on when they see a, um, you know, a scientific study. And it could be oversimplified when they do it. But that's what they would get out of this study.